Thank you for joining us. This is SSM Echo News. We give you information and analysis all over the world, but you have to decide for yourself. My name is Shekou Johnson, and I'm so glad you are watching. I'm not the only one in the studio. I have with me in the studio from Nigeria, Bidi Nana. Bidi, you're welcome to the program. Good morning, Dr. Shegu. Thanks for having me again today. Good morning, our viewers all over the world. Let's do it again by Congress. Yes, and from Toronto, Canada, is our own man, Sir George. George, you're welcome to the program. Well, we thank you, Dr. Johnson, Biddy. Good morning, and viewers around the world. We want to welcome you to our show today. Uh, in Milan is the man we call the Massive Mark. Mark, you're welcome to the program. Good morning, Dr. Shago. Good morning, Sir George. Good morning, Biddy. It's good to see you guys again with my new haircut. Yes. <laughs> it looks nice on you. Thank oh, you. Well well, the ladies have spoken, so we better keep. Our we mind. better just keep our mouth just... shut. <laughs> we're going to blame it on the narrow shortage, but now nah, let's <laughs> just keep our mouth shut. <laughs> it should have been a beautiful morning, why it not for the challenges in Nigeria? Normally, we talk on uh, international news today, being Friday, but uh, we're going to have a special program on Nigeria. February 25 is the D Day for presidential and legislators' elections. However, it's becoming bleaker and bleaker by the day. Um, there are so many protests all over Nigeria, and uh, I was thinking one or two places, but BD was just telling me off camera that uh, there are so many protests in different states. Uh, so let's start before we analyze, let's start from BD in Lagos. Uh, what's going on in Nigeria concerning the protests, BD? Dr. Shegu, nothing is going on. People are not happy. The, 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 the environment is tense. For the past two weeks, we've been witnessing some protests starting from Ekiti or your it's now extended to Edo and Delta. Banks has been burnt, ATM machine has been destroyed. People were even killed, about three people killed two days ago. We woke up this morning to notice another protest in Lagos. It started from Ojota, Iyanoba, Ikorodu. Um, and the, the, the funny thing about this Lagos protest is that it, you know, normally how protest starts, it should start by people going around, you know, displaying their placard and why they are protesting. But this one started like it was a bomb. And people are going back home. People have gone to school to withdraw their children. Shops are closing. Offices are closing. It's really tense in Lagos as I speak with you now. Well, for the purpose of our viewers, uh, there is a running battle between the judiciary and the executive at the federal level. The executive have uh, changed the color or the design of Naira and uh, the swapping date the closing date for the swapping date was made to be january 31st extended to uh, february 10 and uh, the money was just not there and the people were agitating the federal government in his own understanding decided to release an address from the presidency yesterday saying that uh, yes you can only spend the 200 the old 200 naira up to the 10th of april but 500 and 1000 naira cease to be legal tender however you could go to any central bank and uh, change them for uh, the new naira if you have a chance uh the judiciary on his own part has been approached by a few states and the supreme court said as far as they're concerned, the federal government should continue to receive 1,500, 200 naira as legal tender until the substantive case is disposed of. Uh, no dates. However, no trader will receive the old legal tender from your hand. People are suffering. They couldn't buy food for their family. The serious problem of exchanging uh, to to transfer is difficult and to make it worse the point of sale uh, 
managers and operators, they now make a kill, 10%, 20%, even in some cases, 30% on the money you withdraw, which means, which translates, uh, you want to withdraw 100,000 Naira, you pay them 130,000 Naira. As a judge in Toronto, you are a well-seasoned man by any standard. We've never seen anything like this before. <clears throat> a separation of powers and checks and balances created by the democracy handed over to us is being challenged. Secondly, the governor of Kaduna State says that I do not operate within the laws of Nigeria. If the president says his own, the legal tender continues in his own state as long as he's the governor. He has only 100 more days to be the governor of Kaduna State. So in essence, the federation made up of the federal government, state government, and local government has been is in turmoil as they do not agree with one another. The arms of government, the judiciary and the executive, they are loggerhead. I have never experienced things like this in my 50 years of uh, political science uh, graduation. Uh, George, maybe you can help us out. <clears throat> well, you look at the whole situation, like what we um, predicted several um, uh, weeks ago uh, regarding this whole situation when they were talking about, you know, changing the money. We said, we mentioned it and said the bank managers will be the problem before it even started. We said it. Now, the problem within the government, where there are three arms of government, but the president is still operating as a pseudo military a president, a military man. Because if he does not understand the rule or the, the un understand the balance, checks and balances of the three powers of the government, and he will come irrespective of what the Supreme Court is saying to come and add his own, then that means he doesn't understand, you know, uh, what Federation is, the Republic of Nigeria stands for. Therefore, he would disregard them saying, okay, we will continue to use all the tenders until further notice or maybe until April. April, he, he comes out and say, no, only 200 Naira. The only thing that they are doing is his mindset, the reason why they rushed into this, you know, coloring, recoloring our money is simply because they have an agenda. And that agenda is that they're trying to stop what they call paying people off, you know, the, you know to, to buy votes. But that's not the only case in this whole situation. Look at the sufferings of the whole world. Look at the people, had, you know, I mean, our people in Nigeria. People are dying. They're even predicting right now that the lifespan of, you know, Nigerians are going to be 50, is going to fall below 53 years old, which they, they predicted before. Right now it's below 53. So people are dying. People are angry. People are hungry. They have money in the bank. They cannot, you know, access their money. So we are in a very chaotic situation in Nigeria. And let me tell you one of the major problems we are having today. The president of Nigeria have no clue whatsoever. What was written for him, he read yesterday. He is completely separated from the people he's ruling. He does not understand. Look at him. When he was reading, he was reading. You could tell when somebody is speaking from their heart, he is absolutely separated from what people are going through. What they wrote for him, that was when he was actually reading it and thinking about how to react, facially and otherwise. He had no clue whatsoever what's going on. And that's the reason why he will not turn around and say, okay, what is really going on? Why is the Supreme Court saying this? Court saying this? And what should I do? Okay. Uh, Mark in Milan, um, the first time we will hear that uh, this Naira uh, swap was being done to affect the APC presidential candidate was from the APC presidential candidate himself, uh, Ahmed Tinubu. Yesterday, Governor El Rufai one of the very close friends of Buhari came out to say again that it was done against him. 
uh, I, it is unprecedented that uh, a governor will speak against the president of Nigeria like that. Unprecedented that El Rufai, one of the so-called uh, close Fulani kinsmen of uh, President Buhari, will come out to shame his own principal. It has never been uh, uh, so. We we are looking at a very serious situation, dire situation. Is 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 the political class trying to create a chaos in Nigeria for a reaction? Mm. That, that's what it looks like, Doctor Shagun. Uh, it looks like that. Too. We we are seeing this. And take note also, Erufai is an APC, a staunch APC member, and. Um, He's supposed to be in the same camp with the president, uh, but it's strange what is happening. Uh, yesterday, breaking news, like uh, uh, Sir George has said, uh, was very, um, we, I mean, we read too many meaning to it also here. Uh, Buhari seems to be sympathizing with Nigerians, but also defending this not so good policy. And um, he said a lot, he's like you've said, Dr. Shagun, uh, the old 500, and 1,000 notes will no longer be legal tender. Uh, but the other one, the 200, will still stretch till April the 10th. Um, what, what we're seeing is uh, lots of quagmire in Nigerian political space. Uh, the APC is having the infighting. Uh, the, the discordance in them is, is now loud. It's no more an infighting. It's open. Everybody can see it. El Rufai responded yesterday. A lot of APC of uh, Star Wars responded too. And um, we, we, we don't know where this is taking us to. We hope it doesn't get into, like you said, um, a transitional kind of arrangement where somebody comes in. Uh, okay. Let us learn from the woman on the ground, Bidi. Uh, the president said you, the 200 Naira note is a legal tender until the 10th of April. The the Supreme Court says 1,500, they are all legal tenders till April. One or two other governors, apart from uh, Governor Rufai, I think it was in your state uh, or probably Ogun State, saying, yes, 1,500 are legal tenders. Number one, are the people themselves, are they accepting that situation? That is, are the traders, will they take 1,500 Naira from you? Number two, please, these are the questions we want you to answer. Number two, the 200 Naira that uh, the president has agreed to be legal tender till 10th of April, that 200 Naira, we understand that they, most of them have been destroyed by the central bank, and therefore they don't even have enough 200 Naira to send out. So if a person should go to the ATM now, will he or she get uh, 200 Naira old notes? It's okay, Dr. Shegu, uh, let me start by, um, from what uh, Massive Mike said and what uh, Sir George said. You know, Nigeria is a federation mm -hmm. country. And one thing we should understand is that Buhari has been a military leader. He risen to become a general. So in as much as Nigeria is a federation country, there are things he might not understand. Secondly, being the kind of person he is, that is why he's having issue with judiciary. They understand. Now, the people are no longer taking the 500 and the 1,000. Because of this, after the speech yesterday, I deliberately did not want to drive. I went into the market. I boarded the bus. I went into the market to find out what has been going on. People have stopped taking the 500 and the 200. It's only even I bought something of 5,000. I gave the woman 5,000. He said 5,000 because when I tried to, I have to take the old note. The woman rejected it. She said she will not take it. I went to the another shop. She said that she will only take it if the children will accept that they will use it for transport. And they took it. But me, I knew they will not take it in transport. Totally, <coughs> like you said, the 200 naira notes, they are not readily available. But the federal government and the CBN, they have promised that they are going to flood Nigerian banks with enough new Naira note, not just only the 200 Naira. They are going to flood it. Now, let me say something about Nigerians. When I talk about Nigerians in this context, I'm talking about like 70% of Nigerians. And when you're trying to have a benchmark, and if you have 70, you will not say you have a good number. Nigerians are not teachable people. 
we have this closed mindset. See, what is happening in Nigeria now, it's, it's not as bad as we are making it look like. If you find out some of the protests that is going on, it's like an initiated thing. The one that happened in uh, Benin, some eyewitness said that they saw boss came and dropped some people who owned the CBN house in in a in Benin. 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 And from the information I'm getting in Lagos this morning, the people that are actually protesting in Lagos are hoodlums, hired hoodlums, not the general Lagosians. So you see. The thing is that we're making it, I've never been, uh, Buari has tried, I must be frank with you, in this situation. Because when he gave that speech yesterday, and when he said that 200 naira will, will still be in existence, in line with the new 200 naira to April 10th, that was a welcome development, and Nigerians should accept it. But at the back of our mind, and some people has been programming us, instigating us not to accept, Aerofire has the, uh, the, the president. Buari and Aerofire, we are a very close people. They are kinsmen, they are close, they are friends. I don't know where this is coming from. The Ogun State's governor last week closed down a big supermarket because they refused to collect the old Naira notes. So you see, it's because an issue. Nigerians are making this thing look like the way it's not i'm not saying people are not suffering but the way some people are pushing it and if you look at it it comes it goes down to what uh, senator sammy Shem said he said that why so many governors are kicking against this policy is because they've hoarded money they want to use to buy votes and if you look at how everything is unfolding you look at how everything is going it, you, it looked like uh, senator sunny was actually right if not why would some governors be daring a whole president of Federal Republic of Nigeria on a policy that they should be part in making it work? Okay, thank you. Sir George, yes. the judiciary is a laughing stock in Nigeria. Um, their former uh, chief justice of Nigeria, Onoge, was removed uh, unceremoniously a few years ago. The present one has not even been sworn in. The last one uh, could not differentiate between technical legalities and the rest. Uh, many people know that many judges in Nigeria, they receive bribes. Therefore, the presidency is not taking them seriously in any form. This has culminated into the judiciary uh, not being respected. And on this occasion, Buhari is riding on it. People like Falano came out to say, oh, you must respect the judiciary. But many people are saying, which judiciary? Are they that a respectable agency or arm of government? So why these? Uh, what is wrong in the system, Sir George? Well, I always say, how do you know a dead fish when it starts smelling from the head? If somebody is trying to give you an answer when they don't even know what the questions are, what are you going to expect from them? So what we are seeing today is a nation in chaos. Mm. And all the arms of the government, everybody is basically doing their own thing. As long as they can actually believe that they can get away with it, and they will do it. And that's what we are seeing today. Look at, you know, the judiciary is as the people that are supposed to bring balance to the whole entire nation. Because any case that goes to them, we're supposed to trust them that they will fairly and equitably be able to bring out uh, 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 justice and information that is supposed to bring, bring, bring uh, um, uh, peace in the nation. But because there are also corruption has you know, penetrated into them also. Therefore, when the, the, the executives are seeing that the judiciary is also <laughs> they are into corruption and they are able to be receiving bribe and change their decision that they're supposed to make or you pay them so that they will side you. That is the problem we are having today. And in, in all of these things that we are saying, like what Biddy was saying a few minutes ago, if it is the hoodlums that are going around, burning the, you know, starting rioting, 
destroying banks. Many banks are closed today. Many banks are closed according to the information that we are receiving. So what is it? Who is sending them out? Are they doing this on their own? Is it or the people that are thinking are believing that they're going to lose this election if it's held on the 25th? Are, are the people sending out, you know, people so that they can delay the election? Maybe something will happen or another, you know, interim government will come in for, for, the, for the moment. What we are seeing today is a nation in chaos. People are hungry. They are hungry and they are angry. And then when you combine both, you can never have peace. Is this not what uh, the great man wrote, Chino Achebe? Things fall apart. Fall apart. Yes, and exactly center, what is happening in Nigeria today. The center are no are longer falling longer. apart. And mm. let me tell you something. Let me tell you what is really going on. You see, when you are a leader and you cannot feel what your people you're leading are feeling, you are standing outside of what they are going through emotionally. Or you do not, you are making plans on contingency plans without really making other plans to back up the plan that you're making. For instance, mm. when they talk about this Naira situation, the only reason was only one reason. And Buhari is still insisting on maintaining that reason why the Naira note was recolored. And mm. that is why you're seeing what is happening. If they had done this, bring us one strategy for transition of this from the old to the new, then you would have seen an easy, easy process. But because none was done, they are myopic. Their myopic view is only we want to stop the corruption of our power, somebody buying votes. Mm. That's all that is happening right now. And the yeah. people are the victims. That's right. what's happening. Let me use the opportunity to welcome Dr. Godwin Ibe from Moscow, Russia. Dr. Ibe, you're welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. Hope I'm audible. Yeah, I'm sure you've been listening from the background what we've been discussing. And uh, the next question which comes to you is that all of these protests, what will it culminate to in uh, relation to the February 25 election? Do you think if things continue to progress, these protests progress this way to next week, do you think INEC will be in a position to conduct a free, fair, and credible election? Um, the tough question. The first part is actually easy. Uh, what are the effects uh, in terms of more loss of lives? The definitely more loss of lives. And the second, um, apart from the suffering of the people which the policy has caused, we also have low vote turnout. Now, the second question is, I need to be able to conduct free and fair election. It depends on what you mean. What does it mean free and fair? It, it can be free, maybe fair, but inclusive. If there's low voter turnout, it will not represent the true will of the people. So, I mean, uh, the, the, if, if, if only the people who are who are escorted by the police are the only who are going to vote, and people who, you know, just want to lose their life quickly, uh, uh, seeing what is going on, say, look, you know, maybe it's not the best time to go out. Um, they, they have not exercised their voting right, but at the same time, you cannot say that the ballot was stopped. So you can say it's not inclusive. So um, we have to try as much as possible to make sure that, and of course, the logistics problem, the INEC, uh, speaking to the National Commission, uh, I think about two weeks ago, two, three weeks ago, uh, he said that the, the NIA scarcity is affecting logistics of INEC. That's what he does in his word. But he assured that he would, they would do their best to make sure the election holds on 25th. So, um, is it, do we just want anything to hold on 25th, or do we really want free, fair, inclusive, where Nigerians really express their vote? Is the PVC as of today on the 17th, can we say that it's inclusive, it indicates the real voter base in Nigeria? Is the distribution fair, uh, where people given equal opportunity to get them? Uh, so these these are questions that I mean, the answer is very clear. The answer is as clear to you as it is to me. Then I think uh, we we know what to expect because it's just six days. There are no magic that are going to happen in six days. So um, okay. it's what thank, it is. Thank you, Dr. Ebi. Um, Mark, 
we have uh, postponed presidential election twice in the in our recent history. Atairu Jega postponed it the first time and the second time, and nothing nothing changed. There was no Nigerians did not uh, boil. We we will be surprised if by next week Wednesday uh, the uh, the officials of INEC say they are pro postponing the presidential election. <laughs> We won't be surprised, but um, our man gave his word at the Chatham House. Uh, so uh, Atairu gave his word. <laughs> uh, well, um, uh, situations are really getting out of control. But one thing remains that uh, the election holding might change this whole thing happening. So it's 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 imperative that um, uh, you know sometimes you could uh, there could be war going on and some policy could still be going on the ground to ease that war. Mm. Um, so I, I would suggest that INEC doesn't restrain or go so roll back at conducting the election. Let it still go on. However numbers that come out, it might not be all the numbers of voter, uh, voters, but let's do this because this is the only way we can stop this whole quagmire. That's my own. Uh, Bidi, I knew uh, your position because we discussed before we started, you, you don't want the election to be postponed. What do you think will happen if this election is postponed? Who will be the loser? Who will be the winner? It's postponed. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. If they postpone this election, Nigerians should lose. Nigerian populace will lose. Yes. Because let me tell you what is happening in Nigeria now. The people who are not used to winning election by who they are or by what they have to offer to Nigerians are actually the people who have been kicking against this election. They've been doing everything to not allow this election to go on. Now, if you postpone this election, this cash crunch that is happening in Nigeria, they will have their way. Because why a lot of people have been crying for CBN to extend the deadline is because many of them have such never notes in their closets they were used to buy votes. As I speak with you yesterday, over one billion naira was returned to CBN headquarters. Yes, the people kept but at home. By yes. by the by who by, do we know? By Nigerians, by diff different Nigeria. I made a mistake. I would have sent you one video I have. Mm. You see them carrying a particular man and his boys carried 50 million naira. And they were asking him, why have you not brought this thing all this way? Because they believe that they will have their way. But after yesterday that the president did this nationwide broadcast, so many of them are beginning to wake up to the realities on ground. So if they postpone this election, so many things will go wrong. I'm just pleading with the INEC. I'm pleading with the Nigerians who have been going on protesting to take it easy. I know it has not been easy. Let them endure, let them tolerate. In less than a few weeks, everything will mellow down and things will not continue like that. Please, INEC should not just postpone this election because this will never get better. Even if they postpone it, let them just let this election hold. I think after this election, a lot of things will mellow down and things will change and Nigeria will get quiet. Honestly, Bidi, you should be the next bishop in uh, the church. <laughs> the, way, <laughs> the way you have appealed to INEC and Nigerians, uh, you have done a very good job. Uh, we will go on a short break. When we return, we really want to discuss the issues of Nigeria. Uh, we will be talking something about a balloon hovering on top of your house uh, or your business place. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Hi there, I'm Mary Keurig and I am a businesswoman in the United States, but I'm also the global content uh, vice president for the Sub-Saharan Open University in Nigeria. I could not be prouder to work with Dr. Osida Anamika and his team 
on helping to create not just entrepreneurs and skill-based uh, talent that will get out into the workforce and make a living for themselves, but also young leaders. And to that end, with this integrity-rich university environment that's accredited now, and it's just an amazing opportunity for anyone there of any age to jump on board and learn, we want to uh, let you know about a new offering that we have. We have a governance, global governance and diplomacy course now provided uh, by a whole team of people that crosses several countries to put together these resources and lots of great information for those of you who might be on the path toward public service and diplomatic service, NGO leadership, that sort of thing. We hope that you will walk through this open door and enjoy. Ladies and gentlemen, Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, ADC, 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 ADC,
is focused on one thing and one thing alone. He can say all he wants so, or he can read whatever that was written for him. His attention is on the election. He does not want anybody to be buying votes. He believes that a particular individual or many of them will be selling or buying the votes of PVC like they have been doing. So his attention is focused on it. So he still maintains the decision he made, but irregardless of the pain that it is causing, they did not strategize well. That is the bottom line. Because if they had strategized when they changed the color of the Naira, they could have put in an infrastructure from the central government to all the banks in the nation, how this thing will flow to, to the people. It would have been. But what you're seeing today is like, you know, things are falling apart in our country. Yeah. Every uh, arm of the government is maintaining their own. Now, the, yeah. the, the state governors are doing whatever they want because they know, I stand by the Constitution, if the judiciary is saying that we have to continue to use, you know, the three, the 200, the 500, and the 1,000, therefore, I believe in the state government. Can the president come against me when I, I'm standing with the state government according to the Constitution? He cannot. And let me tell you what is going to happen. It will continue because Buhari wants to step down at all costs. And as a result of that, he has no power. So people are not even afraid of his decisions or whether they, he will come back again against them anymore. So what that's the what Americans call the lame happen. dog president. That's exactly what it is. Uh, so maybe. he is trying to make sure at all costs that the election hold, regardless of the effects on the people. And Billy, by the way, I tend to, you know, basically fundamentally disagree with you because if there are no narrow, you can buy gas and then you have to travel to your own state to, you know, do the election. How do you hold an election? Because today, if you are in Lagos, they want you to travel to the east to vote from where you come from. How does that work anyway? How do you get fuel to travel? Where is the money to eat? You don't have transportation money. You don't have, you can't access your own money when you didn't have it. So how are you going to be able to travel to your own state in order to vote? So there is a problem in logistics. It appears that Biddy doesn't want the election to be postponed uh, because she believes that a particular candidate may win or may lose out of these. Uh, yes, uh, but I, I, I'm with Fairness to this government, excuse me, fairness to this government, to government mm. of Buhari. I'm mm. telling you, they have provided enough money for logistics to make sure that this election is held. Let, let me tell you, we should learn how to channel our uh, uh, annoyances or grievances to the proper channels. The problem is not the government. The problem is not the CBN. The major problem in this new Naira note is the bank managers and the big uh, politicians in Nigeria. There was enough money to go around, but some few people have been able to hijack that money. You saw what ha happened in Lagos, you saw what happened in Abuja, in other states, where they went to banks. And these banks, we are keeping this money. And they said, why are you keeping this money? And there's crowd outside. Some banks say they want to they want to input it in the system for over two weeks. You dropped money that was given to you, and there's a crowd outside your bank. And you said you want to input it in the system for over two weeks. Some they ask them, This money you did not display it in your ATM. Where is it? They could not give account where the money went to. Now we should learn to, you know, direct our annoyances, our this thing to the channel, to the proper channels. It's not Buhari, it's not CBN. It is government and we, some of free, we have enough money to go around to make sure that this election holds. Uh, okay, Bidi, um, Bidi, Bidi, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uneasy is the head that wears the crown. Yeah. When you decide to recolor your money and you did not put in a, enough infrastructure or put, you know, the strategies that where this money can go down all the way to the poor woman in the village that is selling Akara or selling granite. Are you telling me that you are blaming the bank? Okay, why is the banks, why are the banks holding back the money? If you are the government, you should hold them responsible. So if that does not work, don't blame the banks, blame the government. There was no infrastructure put together. You can provide all the money you want to, but if you don't put the way the money ought to go. Well. They are doing their job. They have provided the money. But some group of Nigerians who are, intended to 
make sure that this election who is, is supposed to hold them responsible, Bidi? Yeah, government who is supposed to hold them responsible? Yeah, why are they doing? Why are yeah, they casting off restraints and doing what they want? How about the so, sorry, let me, let me, me, to be possible. Yeah, yeah, Mark, Mark. Yes, what I want to say is, uh, yeah, the, the uh, both making sense, but um, uh, everybody is to blame on this, both government and the banks and CBN. Uh, normally, when there are policies like this, mostly financial, there are time frames, there are um, giving period, and there are ways to go about it. Now, um, one thing they didn't do so well was to carry the ordinary citizen along. Nigerian government, whenever they are making policies, they, they do as if it's among them. It's just within a group of people. They are not thinking of the 150 million Nigerians that probably don't know what they are doing at that point in time. So they don't carry the people along. If uh, the, the media team of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, this present government, don't know what they are to do. America gives daily briefing in the White House. That is to give the citizens updates on everything that should be done. People are not carried along in Nigeria. People wake up and things just fly them. But, but that's why they get agitated and they react because they, they, they are not carried along. Nobody is telling okay. them what is Bidi, so, Thank you. Bidi, I have one question for you based on your discussion so far. The impunity shown by the executive arm of government over the Supreme Court's decision, the impunity shown by the uh, various governors rejecting the position of the federal government. Will that impunity not go, down, not go down to every other Nigeria in their spheres of life and say, look, there's, people don't respect the law anymore, the president, the governor, so why should I respect the law, which we normally call down as breakdown of law and order? Don't you think that will happen now? Yeah, of course it will happen. And in, in, in some ways, we might them more. Because the, the Buhari government has been known for that. They don't obey the rule of law. So it's not a thing of today or yesterday. Buhari government has been known that. So like uh, who said that? So, like you asked, uh, uh, Sir George, why do they want the courts to respect their order? When courts gave order to release him from the panel, did they release him? They did not. And some of these governors who have been suing CBN, suing federal government, any of them said, why are you still keeping in them the cargo that has been discharged for months now? So it, it, this administration has been a government of impunity. But what I'm saying, for, for once, they've done something that is of the interest of Nigerian government. But it's so unfortunate that the Nigerians are not seeing it. Look, let me tell you, nothing good in life comes easy. I must tell you the fact. Not if Nigerians can endure this situation, this period, I'm telling you, we will come out triumphantly. But the truth is that we don't have this teachable character. We don't have the power of endurance. That is just the problem. Uh, Bidi, I would have loved to. I would have loved to agree you. with you, uh, Sir George. I would have loved to agree with our sister. She's passionate about that. But don't you see the end of all these arguments which we are having here being present in the Nigerian system? Don't you see it as culminating into postponing the presidential election come 25th February? Yeah, everything is gearing towards postponing this election. I must be frank with you. Everything that is happening in Nigeria now, even the people who are instigating this thing, all their intention is to postpone this election. And I just pray that they don't achieve their end. Everything Sir, that is happening... Sir George, what's your take on that? Well, um, the problem that I'm having with um, not postponing the election, I would rather have the election to hold if, if people can get well, people will be able to access their money so that they can travel and vote to where, vote in the place where the federal government designated them to vote. Um, that's one of the major problems that I'm having anyway. If I am born in Lagos, or my parents are from the from the south, uh, from the east, why should I not be able to vote in that place anyway? If I am, you know, I don't even understand why we are making sure we are insisting that people have to go to wherever, whatever village or whatever, with the with, with the insecurity in Nigeria, with the scarcity of fuel and scarcity of money and scarcity of food. What, I don't understand. This whole thing is just so chaotic. 
It is out of balance. It is just so messed up. Look at, as we are talking right now, more riots are going. Three people killed yesterday in, uh, in Edo State. Many banks were bumped down. Is it the people who is instigating this? So the question is, what, uh, can we just focus on, we want to hold the election, we want to hold the election because we are hoping that the candidate we want to win will win while people are dying daily. Well, uh, Mark, Mark in Milan. Uh, I in, can I correct something? Can I correct something? Sir George. Ten, ten seconds. I don't agree it's, with George. It's, it's not a George. must. You will go to your village. They said, vote where you reside, where you want. You can vote anywhere, but they want you to register where you know you can vote. So some people choose to go and register in their village. And because you registered in your village, you have to go and vote there. So it's not a must that you must vote in where you came from. Okay. Okay, okay Matt, you wanted to say something. I wanted to say that uh, also one thing about life is like if BD said, I'm so much aligning with BD today. Um, it's not in all cases that things work smooth to get a result. Uh, it's, it's, it's in that raggedy, raggedy situation we pull through and get a result. So let's try. It's just six days to 25th. Let's rag it deep and push through and just stomp, stomp our hands. Mark, yeah. on the other hand, where you, you raggedy and pickety and forcefully <laughs> hold the result, the INEC now determines who is the winner. Because in all of it, they will say within the chaotic situation, yeah. uh, Mr. ABC has won. The Kulibu Bishore who has won. <laughs> and it's has okay won. by us. Yes. But it's believe me, okay. you see that, you see that okay. at that point in time, calm will come down. Watch, believe yeah. me, whoever you know, it is, you know so all you are asking for is an uh, election, whether it's credible or not. Is yeah, that what you're asking? No, 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 no. 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 You see, let me tell you, let me tell you something. Not credibility. I think no. that's the challenge. See, you know, do you know, challenge. Dr. Shago, you know more on about the international uh, uh, things. Um, America sometimes, in the heat of confusion, war blah blah they said the president need to sign something he needs to sign an amendment needs to, they want him to just sign even as that thing is happening once he signs bam See, okay. with, yes. the way that, with what is happening in nigeria let me be frank with you honestly with what has been happening in nigeria we might not have a credible election okay. but the thing i want is that let this election come let's see we no longer have life in nigeria let this election happen so that our life can resume uh, George, you in, see, you uh, see, you yeah, see, let me tell you something you don't understand. When it comes to this election, if anything happens and the status quo continues and the nation, the wrong person wins this election, I am telling you, the nation will go belly up. You don't under, you haven't seen any. You think you have seen problems. Let me tell you, you see, hold on, Billy. You need to understand really the internal you are living in nigeria right now you are experiencing it live but let me tell you that if for any reason whatsoever the wrong person gets into that as a rock i can guarantee you you will see trouble that you have never seen before in nigeria because it's going to be like everybody said to your tents oh israel we have no portion in david Okay, <laughs> that is what is going to happen. Yes, so, I, you know, I, I, I think that just, that status quo is, is what mm. every Nigerian wants to change. And mm -hmm. because those who have built it so comfortable with the kind of life we live in Lagos, who doesn't want that status quo to change? Are the person who are causing this scarcity of Naira notes? They are the uh -huh. persons who are causing scarcity of fear? They are the person who wants this election to be postponed? Did you okay, get that? I think the challenge I'm having right now, uh, I've spoken with a few people, my friends in uh, Nigeria, and uh, they are up high there. Uh, they, all of what they are asking is, we just want this election to come and go. We want peace. And I'm asking them, so you want the election 
without it being credible? You want the election without getting the right man in place? Is that what you want? And I'm I'm seeing I'm seeing people who want to keep their home, they want to keep their family, they want to keep uh, their money in the bank, they want to keep the, it all it just have a peaceful uh, atmosphere, but the wrong government. And and that is the challenge. So I'm I'm hearing people, and I'm I'm telling you, I have friends in the church, I have friends in the mosque, I have friends in the government. All they are asking is, look, we want peace, please. Just ask. And I say, do you want a good government? They say peace above government, above mm. good government. And this is the challenge I have. We cannot. That's what happened in 2015. Now we want peace above good government uh, pd is that what you want say i don't want peace above good governance i want good governance if i have good governance above peace i will surely get peace but let me tell you one thing you people don't know when you come where government has where as a person has promised nigeria free and fair election now mm. another thing i want you to understand is that presidency is divided the interest of this election in the presidency is divided. What the presidency wants is different. Remember that when we talk about presidency, we we'll talk about APC. That's the ruling party. <laughs> APC is so divided. <laughs> yes. When uh, the Buhari wants free and fair election, anybody that wins go. But the APC and some of the presidency, they already have their candidates. Okay, Bidi, Bidi, because I just have to move this discussion forward. But one thing, you say Buhari has promised Nigerians and the world free and fair election. One word that I want you to put with those two words, free, fair, and credible. Can we, is it possible that we have credible election? I might not use that one because I'm not sure of that one. I'm telling you, <laughs> but, but Dr. Shagu, you, you should know better. I mean, how can how, we how, how will I can know never better? be credible enough? I mean, um, um, in the heat of all this, it can never be you, it's what, what we have. Idea. What we have is it's what is what happening. Have, yeah. Can I can I say something? What we yeah, have is something. what we have is a cosmetic veil. That's what we have in Nigeria today. The president can say something that whatever he wants to say. But the problem we have is the execution of those things that he's saying. He can say what he wants because the world is listening. He wants a legacy that he wants to leave behind. The president himself knew how he got into the government. He knew how. He knew who installed him there, whether we like it or not. Like what we have said here before, Nigeria is just in the water and soap is entering into their eyes. When John Kerry came to Lagos to talk to Buhari and Tinubu and the election was over, Nigeria was sitting. They did not know what was going on. They did not know what was going on. So President Buhari himself knew that when the, 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 the presidency came to the north, that he's going to be there for eight years, whether it's credible or no credible. When he was asked four years ago, what if you lose? He said, I'm not going to lose. That's what he <laughs> said. I'm not going to lose. And then he started citing that he was 30 months, 30 months in, in, in court, you know, the first election when he ran, second time ago, the same thing. So he knew how he got there. Obama installed him there. So today we are here. He wants to live with a good legacy because he's failed in every other area. He's, he's been sick. How many, you know, you know what one thought of his, uh, you know, presidency? He's been in the hospital. He, he was a hundred and something days. A president, yes, why uh, was it uh, not easy for him to transfer uh, power when he was incapable of ruling the nation? So, this is yes. what we are talking about. So, when you he comes out now and making all these promises, I understand, like I said here before, Buhari is a good man, he's a good man, but he's not capable of ruling Nigeria. We need a man with strong arm, strong administration, administrative you know, tendencies, who can put things together, whether it starts now or slowly, but eventually the nation will come into where we will be able, the world can look at us and say, thank you. Finally, Nigeria has arrived into BD, this proper position. Thank you, thank you, George. Uh, BD, supposing Sir? we have this peace towards February 25, which is just next week, Saturday, 
and the election was done and somebody was said to have won because uh, many of the youths are looking oh it is peter obi who may win and the uh, anane comes to say no it's not peter obi no mm -hmm. it's not uh, ahmed tinubu it is uh, atiku who has won uh, mm -hmm. will will, I, will the peace continue in nigeria <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know, but I know that so many youths might be disappointed. Let me tell you, see, eh? Oh, they will just be disappointed. There will be no rupture anywhere. The, uh, in the past, we've seen how election played out in Nigeria. And this election, mm -hmm. the Labour Party, the youth of Nigeria, mm -hmm. are, have taken it upon themselves to monitor this election. Now, after monitoring this election, and then see that... Nigerians we are given opportunities to choose and they chose that they will only be disappointed there will be no big problem but if they cast the kind of election they've been casting in the past mm. you know election of the more you look the less you see and article emerges I'm telling you it might not be there might not be peace in Nigeria Okay, uh, Mark, uh, we have seen that uh, Atiku has not been the forefront among the three in the last two weeks. But in the last two days, Atiku has now become the forefront man from the back because we are told that the cabals in, pres in the presidency are supporting him. And many more Arewa Northern elders are saying, look, constitutionally, nothing says the presidency should go to the south. It was just a gentleman agreement. And uh, more people are now saying Tinubu is wasting his money on the governors of the northern uh, states, that uh, they want to vote their man. They calculated the number of years and that the south has ruled more than the north. And so it looks like uh, Atiku has come from behind to lead this marathon race. Will you agree with that? Yes, uh, somehow we, yes we saw all of this. Um, that's what is playing out presently. Uh, take note also, the Northerners have, um, like they claim, uh, more, they, they are more in numbers, population, and uh, they, they've always been the conventional voters in Nigeria. They've followed politics all the way. So uh, it's easy to harness them, and that's what they are doing with Atiku. And um, yes, we had the cabals also in Asurok are uh, now coming behind, they are staying behind Atiku. So, but let, let's see how all this plays out because um INEC also showed us new voters that has arised as a result of the lp um yeah um, okay because of the time uh, i wanted to go to uh, nicolas Turgeon and balloon this spy balloon all over the place uh, uh -huh. unfortunately we'll have to delay that one now sir george it appears that uh, article from the back just in one or two sentences uh, has become the main discussion now in the Nigerian presidential race. Is this is this panning out for you too? Well, what is playing out in our eyes, Lord Lugard in Nigeria, Lord Lugard, mm. studied the four parts of Nigeria, the four regions, and decided mm. that the North should be the easy to manipulate. And now the North has taken over almost 80 to 85% of all the infrastructure, everything that is happening in the governance. And if you go to the military, everything is on them. So, you know, we've seen it play out again. But I can tell you one thing. If the presidency does not go to the South, there is going to be chaos. Or do the one will separate. The other will come alive again. Let them go to the bank with that. Um, Bidi, in one sentence, LP may just have to accept whatever INEC brings, isn't it? <laughs> what would they do? Like the question <laughs> you're asking. You know, there's problem in it. Like I said earlier, there's problem in the presidency. There's a problem in the ruling party, which is APC. And have yeah. asked, what is the problem? The problem is this. The presidency is projecting Atiku Ababaka. Yes, that is their candidate. And some parts in the presidency want to their candidates and that's well Billy, Billy, i just have to stop you that's how far we can go today <laughs> because uh, I, I, I don't think well, a, going to us. Well, won the primary election because all the people other people collapse their structure but that has not happened right now the north has not collapsed for Bola Tinubu. so on wednesday we will continue this discussion my thanks to everyone from your different continents uh, we shall be back on wednesday god bless you all